Hi, my name is Cindy Rang with the Fabric Patch in Ephrata, Washington. We are at fabricpatch.net. And I'm going to show you today how to make this quilt. It's called Squared. You can make it with a kit, a bunch of leftover fabric, or your favorite jelly roll. My daughter and I have owned and operated a busy quilt shop in Washington State for over 20 years. We have a retreat center, an active YouTube channel, and a large pattern line featuring our creations. My two sons work on machines. One daughter-in-law is our videographer and the other is a long-arm quilter. We are a family that love each other, we laugh together, and every once in a while we get some work done. We have a crew that are saints for their efforts at keeping us on track. Thanks for joining us on our wild ride. All right, so what's really cool about this particular quilt is that the whole thing is made with two and a half inch strips. And so you can use a purchased jelly roll uh, if there's one that you have purchased and you're dying to cut into, or you can use two and a half inch strips out of your stash. We did that video a week or so ago about how to organize your fabric and how to shop from your stash and how to use it. This is one of those quilts. This is something that if you have a whole bunch of two and a half inch strips that you've cut up or you have some other fabric that you'd like to cut into two and a half inch strips to use, this will be great for that. What you want to know is that the blocks that you're making are going to end up being eight inches finished. The other thing that you need to know is that for every strip that you have, you will get one block and a little bit of your binding. And so that's going to help you to be able to determine how many strips you need. So if you're just using a jelly roll, you get 42 strips. You'll end up with six blocks across by seven blocks down, eight inch finished blocks, which means that your quilt is going to be 48 inches by 56 inches before you've added any borders. If you use two jelly rolls or 80 strips of fabric, you're going to end up with eight blocks across that are eight inches wide, so it'd be 64 inches by 10 blocks down, which will be 80 inches. So 64 by 80 before you've added any borders. So it'll help you to try to decide how much fabric you need to come up with out of your stash, how many jelly rolls, or what you'd like to do to go ahead and get started. All right, the other thing is I want to show you what sort of notions you'll be using. I am going to show you how to use your shape cut if you happen to have one of these, or you'll need um, a ruler to go ahead and cut your strips. You might need a square up ruler if that's something that you're going to need to do. If you only have one, you just have your one six by 24, you'll be fine with that. The other thing that I would suggest is your wet erase marker. We carry these in all of the colors and I use it all the time. And again, a wet erase marker is what you want to use on your ruler because you don't want it wiping off onto your fabric. The third thing is you're going to use some clips. If you don't have binder clips, you can go ahead and use pins or you can just stack them, but I find that this makes my life a whole lot easier. So if you are starting with a jelly roll that's already cut into two and a half inch strips, you only have one other cut to make. For the rest of us that are going to use up our stash, let's just talk for just a second about cutting two and a half inch strips. So I'm going to show you two different ways to do it. I'm going to show you how to use your shape cut or how to go ahead and use your regular ruler. So if I'm using my shape cut, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this out over the top and I'm gonna see where I have my zero, two and a half, five, seven and a half, and 10. And I'm going to go ahead and cut zero, two and a half, five, seven and a half, and ten. That's all I could get out of this particular cut. I'm going to toss, whoops, my leftover pieces on the edges. And then here are my strips that I got all perfectly evenly cut. Oh, except for a little thread right there. If you don't have a shape cut and you're using a regular ruler, 
Let me show you how to do that. Now, the other thing is I want to talk to you for a second about dog legs. What a dog leg is, is when you've cut a strip and instead of your strip being a long line like this, it makes kind of a little funny knee, a little twist to it. The reason that we get those is sometimes people will see an edge like this when you fold it from salvage to fold you might see that there's a funny little edge here or here and people will think well they want to kind of line those things up don't line those up just go ahead and take the natural fold of the fabric and then cut your strips now the other thing when you're cutting strips is that it's generally best to use your ruler to measure rather than your mat because it'll slip and so I'm going to cut off my edge and then for me personally what I tend to do is I walk around to the other side of my mat if you don't have that you can pick that up and lift and move it but that way I don't disturb anything and I'm going to line that up so I'm one two and a half and these little handles, if you have the quick quarter, I mean the um, creative grid rulers, they're so sticky that they're difficult to move and that's what the handle is for, is to be able to pick it up and move it easily. I'm going to cut that, slide that over so I can see where my edge is, come over two and a half, slide up. I think I obviously need to change my blade. And then... So you can still get an accurate cut using your ruler. Uh, it, you're just adding a little bit of speed with your shape cut. But either way, you end up with a nice accurate cut with your strips. Okay, so you either have all of your fabric cut into your two and a half inch strips and your pile that you're gonna work from, or you have opened your jelly roll. One, two, maybe a jelly roll and some pieces, whatever you've got going on. So now it's time to cross cut. And cross cut is the term that we use when you've had one strip and now we're going to cross cut into to some different lengths. And again, I'm gonna show you how to do this with just your regular ruler or with your shape cut, just in case you've been working with your shape cut and you wanna know more about it. I'm gonna show you the basic way. And I just wanna remind you, if you have a non-slip ruler, one of them with the, the nice little additive to it, it's really important to have the little handle because if you're sliding your ruler along, that's what will end up wearing that um, grippy stuff off of your ruler. So what this is for is not to hold when you're cutting, it's to hold when you're picking up your ruler. So that's what that's for. And then of course, whatever um, rotary cutter you're using. All right, so when you cross cut, cross cut means that once you've cut your, your strip, which is your two and a half inches by 42 inches, now it's time to cross cut it. You can layer them, you can cut two here, two here, you can cut six at a time, eight at a time, whatever you feel comfortable doing. What I'm actually gonna do, just so you can see this, is I'm gonna go ahead and cut two at a time. So in doing this, the first thing I'm going to do is line this up over here so that I have a nice straight edge. So I'm going to cut off my salvage. And then I'm going to use this and I'm going to go ahead and turn it because my first cut is going to be eight and a half inches. So at eight and a half inches, you can see that I've lined this up. Here's my eight and a half. And again, I'm cutting through two strips at a time. Just going to double check. And so you can see that what I have is one, two, and two, uh oh, and two on this one. Then I'm 
I'm going to cut my two four and a half inch strips. So I'm going to lay that down the same way. One, two, three, four and a half. I'm right on that cut edge. And now here I have one, two, three, four. Now, for each block, of course, what's happening is you have your surrounding, and you'll see this when we start to piece, but you'll have your surrounding pieces, and then inside your block is where you're going to have your four patches. So even though we're going to mix and match those up, you need four squares for the center of every block. So I'm going to cut, move that out of the way so you can see it, two and a half inch squares, and from each strip I need four of them. So here's one, two, and a half. So I'm going to cut it this time. Oh, I just have a tiny little nick, I think, in my blade. And same thing, one, two, and a half. And so that's what you'll get from each strip. This is what you end up with. You do have a tiny little bit left over. If you like the idea of a pieced binding, you could go ahead and do that if you want to cut these into two and a half inch squares and make a dumpster diving. There's a couple other options for your tiny little tidbits that are left. So we'll keep doing that. We're going to start two piles. One pile is going to be all of our pieces for our frames, and one pile is going to be all of our pieces for our four patches. Now I just want to show you briefly, if you were going to do this with the shape cut, I want you to notice that when we were cutting with the ruler, really I had a six inch ruler so I could really only cut two at a time. So whether this was two strips or if there was maybe three stacks here and three stacks here, if I'm cutting with a 60 millimeter blade, and people ask all the time, well what's the difference between the 45 millimeter and the 60 millimeter? Really it's that idea of depth. So you can see that with a 45 millimeter you can see the depth that I can cut through. A 60 millimeter is going to be quite a bit bigger, so you really could cut through multiple layers or multiple layers of flannel a little bit easier. So that's what the difference is. What I tell everybody is cut through however many layers you feel confident with, because if you make a mistake, then oh, you've made a mistake through six layers, but if not, you can really cut your time down pretty quickly. Anyway, so with your ruler, your distance when you're cutting is relatively minimal. But if you were using your shape cut, you could see that I really could cut multiple stacks and make it super, super fast for cutting. So I'm just gonna cut these two, and then all I'm gonna do Is line this up and what I think is nice with the shape cut is again I'm able to see that line on the edge to make sure that everything is nice and straight right where I'm at and then the other thing that I'll do is I'll go ahead and use my wet erase marker just so that I'm reminded of what I'm cutting so I'm always going to cut on the zero which is of course going to cut off my salvage and then I'm going to cut at the eight and a half. Oh, I already have a mark here. There it is. And then I'm going to cut my four and a half. So here's a half, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna cut it right there. And then I'm going to cut a two and a half, one, two, and a half, and then a half, one, two. I happen to have the extra large 18 inch, but if you only have the 12 inch, it's perfectly okay. You're still gonna cut your eight and a half, and then you would just reposition with the second cut to be able to do the four and a half, a two and a half, and a two and a half. All right, so with my shape cut, and again, cut it, I'm only cutting through two strips, but imagine I could have a couple stacks, a couple rows, 
and I could make this go pretty quickly. And here we are. Take off my salvage. Here's my two eight and a half inch pieces, my two four and a half inch pieces, which I'm going to clip together. And here are my four pieces for my four patches. So what'll happen is as you continue cutting, that's what's going to happen is you'll end up with your stacks of the ones that you've cut and you've clipped together. So you'll have all of these rows and then you'll have all of your other pieces to be able to make your four patches and that's where we're going next. Okay, so your first step, well, first sewing step is going to be sewing all of your four patches together. So you've cut all of these little two and a half inch squares. And if you were noticing, sometimes I was cutting two when I only really needed to cut one. So I probably have more than I need, but it doesn't really matter. That gives me another opportunity to overthink it later and decide which ones I want to keep. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put these together in groups of two. So we call them twosies. And so I have a couple down here. And all you're going to do is just fuss with them for a second. Let me put my glasses on. And so the machine that I like to sew on is a 3.0 uh, FAF machine. And what's really nice about this machine is that when I stop with the needle in the down position, my foot comes up ever so slightly. What's nice about that is I can do chain piecing. So I have my right sides together, my two little pieces. I can just butt that right up against it kind of touches the needle and then as I sew that, when I stop, the needle's in the down position. I just tap my foot, my little presser foot comes up, and I'm um, just going to fuss with this for a second and do my next one. And so then I'm chain piecing. And I'll just keep doing that. But first I want to show you what the next step would be. When I've chain pieced, I end up with all of these. So what I'm actually going to do is cut them apart. So I have those two, those two, those two. I think you can see what I'm doing there. And those two. So then all I have to do when I open this up is and I can decide, so I kind of have them like that. If I decide I don't really like that green on top of that, then I can go ahead and cut that apart. Flip it over, and I'm going to sew it like this. Now, you can go ahead and press, press your seams over, nestle your seams, but I find, I'm going to hold this up close so you can see it, Nestling your seams just means that one seam is going one way and one's going the other way. And what happens is it kind of locks them into place. And so you just want to make sure that that's locked into place. You can pin that or you can use just one of your little clips. And then all I'm going to do is then I'm going to sew this together. Once I've sewn this together, with that for a second. Because of that nestled seam, I have a perfect little point right there. Then my last step will be to go ahead and press it. And when I press it, I just like to make sure that everything is going the direction that I want but I press it from this side. You can see that my hand not in the way. And then here is my four and a half inch block. I'm gonna keep doing those in all of these sets and you'll need one four and a half inch block per block.
Okay, so I still have a couple other blocks, four patches to make, but um, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next step just so that I don't keep you as you're sewing, but um, you're going to end up, obviously you have a four patch per the number of blocks that you're going to make. So I really need to end up with 42 of these. So um, what will happen is if you feel like you need to kind of trim something up, you could, these are supposed to measure four and a half inches and they should. If you have a quarter inch seam allowance, they should come out exactly four and a half inches. And if you've pressed your seams open, they should be okay. Um, if not, you'll want to be checking your seam allowance. And that's the only problem with pre-cutting pieces. I oftentimes like a block that I sew as I go and then I trim everything at the end. This particular though, one though, we cut those pieces. So we've got four and a half inch pieces and we've got eight and a half inch pieces. And so your seam allowance does have to be accurate. So what will happen now is this is yet another opportunity to kind of overthink it a little bit. You know, we can overthink our little four patches and what colors go with what colors and do we have a light and a dark and are they across from each other? Or we can just put them together because it doesn't really matter. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your four and a half inch block and you're gonna take these little pieces that we clipped together and we're going to sew a four and a half strip at the top and a four and a half inch strip on the bottom. After we've sewn those together, this is going to measure eight and a half inches. So then we'll take this one and sew right sides together on that side and this one right sides together on that one. So for me personally, if, if something is wrong here and your size isn't quite right, it's not really going to matter. I mean, it's going to matter because things aren't going to quite line up right. But after you've sewn all of these together and we've pressed them, if you have to trim your blocks down a little bit so that they're all seven and three quarter inch square, you can do that. This is one of those blocks that you can square up if you need to because you're not gonna lop off any points. You really shouldn't need to. Quarter inch seam allowance is critical, but it always is with all of your quilting. With, with almost every pattern, the math has been figured based on that quarter inch seam allowance. So if you're not sure where it is on your foot, you should do a little bit of testing, measure it, make sure that everything is okay. If you consistently have trouble, maybe look to see where your needle position is and make whatever adjustments you need to make with that. All right, so I'm gonna try not to overthink this too much, but I'm gonna go ahead and piece some of these blocks so I can get some up on, on the board and we can take a look at it. And again, we've cut these out so that sometimes we're gonna have light borders, sometimes we're going to have dark borders, but that's really kind of what's fun about it is that it's really, it's scrappy, but it's also an organized quilt, so it's kind of fun. Okay, so when I was doing the four patches, you'll see that I, I don't always stop to press when I'm nestling seams. I think when I'm teaching beginners, I teach them that. I think it's important to know all of those steps to make sure that your blocks end up okay. But when I'm dealing with a space that's relatively short, like the you know that two and a half inch length, I felt pretty comfortable that I could nestle those seams and keep that all together um, to make sure that everything came, came out right on point, and, and they do. Um, but now that I'm going to have to go eight and a half inches, I am gonna stop and press. I just think that pressing is important and I could end up with quite a bit of excess stuff in those seams and I could end up with a block that's a little bit wonky. So pressing isn't that big of a deal. It's only gonna take a couple extra seconds. Um, ripping takes far longer than pressing. So um, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to press them 
and then and again when you're pressing you're just pressing those seams open this is what's going to ensure that this block is eight and a half inches and sure enough then I'm going to go ahead and sew that one on oh I'm going to do a great job pressing my iron shuts off Don't you hate that here we go There's something also that's just really nice about a nice crisp pressed block and best press smells so good. I don't know if there's a little aromatherapy going on anyway. All right. So then I'm going to sew those on and that's my block. I'm going to get all of these together and then we're going to play on the design wall for a minute. So I'm going to sew for a bit. All right, I'm sure I look tired. I started overthinking, which, well, not started, I think from the very beginning. That's all I do is overthink about it. But what I was trying to do at first is I was just putting my four patches together and it didn't matter and doing my little frame and it kind of doesn't matter. And then I realized that mm, I kind of do like it to have a little bit of a color story. And I found that I really liked you know the ones that had some uniformity you know a little bit more than like say this one for some reason I am just not feeling these so much and Brianna thinks that it's because whenever there's a stripe I always feel like that border needs to be mitered I don't like that these go into these and maybe that's what it is I'm not sure but I don't know I um, I decided to stop for just a moment and start kind of organizing a little bit so that I could kind of look and say okay I like these blocks okay maybe not that one. <laughs> but I like these blocks with this so I was putting those together and I like these blocks with this and so I decided just to kind of organize them a little bit better I like these with this so that's what I'm gonna do but I'm trying to decide if I'm going to rip those out or not and it's kind of a funny thing because it's not that ripping is um, is that big of a deal. Sometimes we just change our mind, but um, and oftentimes I'll tell people that if you just leave it, then when the whole quilt is done, it's not really going to bother you. But if it does bother you, I would feel really, really bad that every time you look at the quilt, you see that one block that you don't like. So. I just think it's important that you love your work and you love the process and you love what you're done with. So for me, I think I am going to rip. Um, so one other thing about this as um, we're going through this is that at any point you can always maybe go through your stash if you happen to be somebody who has a little bit of a stash. And if there's something that you're, you're kind of not feeling and you think that it's just not quite right, maybe you could just find another fabric to kind of throw in there that you think would work good and kind of change something out. Um, maybe add some uniformity if that's what you think it needs or a different kind of a color story if that's what you think it needs. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and um, 
keep sewing some blocks and um, I'm probably going to be done for tonight, but then I'm going to keep sewing some blocks. And then when I get all of the blocks done, I am going to talk to you about some different ways to organize fabrics because I've already done the math for you. And if you feel like even this is way too, you know, scrappy for you, then um, there's other things that you can do. And, and we'll talk about that. So we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Okay, I have my blocks done. So um, now really the overthinking starts because that's what happens is um, you can come up with a pattern if you want to and pa whoops, patterns can do different things. What you can do is you can like put diagonal rows of the gray and diagonal rows of the yellow and diagonal rows of the green and then kind of start over again. You can do something like that if you like to. Um, I, I really like the very scrappy random look and um, remember in the beginning I said don't worry so much about the four patches and don't worry about what goes around the four patch because again it's scrappy so you see everything anyway. You see all of this piece wherever it is everything kind of ends up a little bit sparkly so you can really overthink it as much as you want to. Really the only problem with that is you don't want to get stumped. You don't want to just stop all together. Just keep going and you'll see when you get to the end it's all fine. Um, sometimes you might find something. I have to say that for me personally I don't particularly care for this block. And I think the reason that I don't care for this block is I don't like that this pattern runs into that pattern. I feel like it's not really a border type fabric. So. Other than that, uh, I don't know. The rest of them I, I really do like. I like the color combination. Um, but now what I do is I keep standing back, looking at it, deciding if it seems okay. The most bold blocks that I have are, of course, the ones with this kind of charcoal-y gray and then the ones with this little chartreuse-y kind of color. And so for me personally, I kind of feel like they need to be spread out enough um, that they all make sense. And the same thing with the green ones, you know, I've got them kind of spread out. Um, other than that, I don't know, you know, I, I look at it a lot. So I might, I kind of feel like these two are a little too close together. So I would probably swap those. But then once you do that, then you have to decide, oh, do I want these two to touch? So now I might move it again. So anyway, on and on and on. So um, I would just suggest fiddle with it as much as you want. Um, sometimes when you get a little too close to it, you don't see something. So one thing that makes it kind of nice is to take a picture of it. When you take a picture of it, it kind of focuses it a little bit more so you can really almost see close up and you can see if there is or isn't a pattern. That's a particularly nice thing to do when you have something that's like, you know, spinning stars or something. If you take a picture of it, you'll immediately see that something is spinning incorrectly or something is flipped. All right, before you sew these together, there's one other thing that I need to tell you, and that is that my suggestion, and I wrote this in the pattern, is that you want your blocks to kind of um, be turned a little bit. So if you look at this block, this block is really no different from this block is really no different from this block. The difference though is that here, and I don't know if they can see this, if you're gonna zoom in on this for them, but the seam is here. And here, the seam is here. If I were to really turn this block, see this was the first border that I put on and this was the last border. If we sew them together like this, you're going to either want to line those up or you're going to notice if they don't. And so what I would do is I would just take that out of the equation because it's really not necessary. So what I would do is I would turn it. And so now what's happening is this just comes into nothing. This one, see, just comes into nothing. So every other one, all I'm doing is that I'm turning this one goes this way, this one goes this way, this one goes this way, this one goes this way. So I've turned every other one so that nothing has to line up. It just makes it kind of nice and easy peasy piecing. So that's my last suggestion. 
And then again, the way that I sew rows together, there's all kinds of ways to do it. You can just sew your first row together, press them all one direction, sew your next row together, press them all the other direction, sew your next row together, and then um, sew all your rows together. If you've not ever done something like that before, uh, we did that in a little video called Eliza's First Quilt, and Eliza shows you how to do that with squares. And that's what's so nice about a pattern like this, is you can make this any size you want. Make just a couple of blocks, make a whole bunch of blocks, no matter what, just sew those rows together. Once you've done that, it'll be time to sew on your borders. And again, what I would probably do is just, a, and what I'm going to do with this one, is just a five inch border. Your border is what gives you an opportunity to add a little bit more color, a little less color, more of the fabric that you really love. It also gives you an opportunity to add size if you really have somebody that's a little bit taller or it has to fit a specific bed. So after I put the border on it, um, it'll be time to quilt it and bind it and then use it. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to go ahead and sew these rows together and then I'm done, put the border on it. So at the end, um, here in just a few minutes, um, we'll show you the finished quilt. So I hope you've enjoyed this pattern. Um, I hope that you end up making it again and again and again. And thanks for hanging out with us. So I just want to show you this version of the quilt. Um, we made this quilt probably 15 years ago, and that was before we did all of the um, two and a half inch strips for our stash. And so you can see this is a whole lot of leftover stuff. So here are those four patches. They're all over the place out of all kinds of things, but we wanted to make this quilt bigger. So the other thing that we added was some four and a half inch squares. Again, if you're doing a whole bunch of floral stuff or novelty stuff, you have a bunch of leftover things, you can add some four and a half inch squares in here. The other thing that makes this one a little bit different is that we color coordinated the frames. So instead of having multiple colors like our other version was, this was two different fabrics that we just went around and around and around and then alternated them which gave a little bit of symmetry to the quilt so it's just another option when you're digging through your stash and wanting to use up those really pretty fabrics that you've already purchased thank you for watching our video we invite you to leave a comment hit the like button or better yet subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode you can also visit our instagram twitter facebook or pinterest pages or find all of those things and our online store at fabricpatch.net